LCS Week 2, plenty of juicy matchups in both EU and NA. EU getting underway on Friday, and some of the key matchups. Listen, Vitality is the only 2 0 team after Week 1. So, heading into Week 2, who do they get? Well, they're getting tested immediately. They're going to be playing guys like Fnatic and Misfits. <laughs> if they go 2 0 again, wow, fantastic. Definitely, that is, this is kind of the, you know, put up or shut up type of week. It's real early, and this is, again, a long way to go. But this is definitely going to give us that early, quick look at if Vitality is for real or not. This is, these, these are teams that you're going to have to be able to beat at the top level in Europe if you're going to be these, this champion, and so that this is going to be a great preview for us. Yeah, and uh, another one I want to look at there, the Splice, Shulka. I'm not 100% sure yet whether or not Upset is coming back in the lineup for Schalke, but that's kind of showing teams that are maybe just outside that top two, that three fighting for that spot. I know Splice did not look that good in week one. No. Uh, looking for them to rebound and see what Schalke can be like at their full strength, or just more games as Vander on AD carry, because that was amazing to watch. I don't know, maybe we're gonna, do you think we'll see the return of Boris once more? <laughs> that was a, that was an awkward situation. <laughs> yeah. So I hope upsets back. In the I hope so too. But I think when you're talking about Splice, yeah, they didn't really show exactly what they wanted that first week. You know, they wanted to show that we are a team that will be in that top, you know, discussion for Europe as far as contending. And they didn't quite bring the gameplay to back up that. So looking this week against FC Schalke, who did look pretty strong in their week, I think that this is something that they can look forward to. Yeah, and obviously we got G2. Fnatic to close out the weekend of the last game on Saturday. But uh, just jumping back to Vitality, I mean, this is a team that I thought would maybe be a borderline playoff team fighting with, I don't know, teams like H2K for that final playoff spot. But uh, they come guns a blazing in week one. Obviously, they don't play any of the upper tier uh, teams in EU. But I mean, they look pretty solid in week one. Jazuki has a fantastic LCS debut and really. Four out of the five Giants guys look super solid, but the ultimate tests come in uh, week two, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if they go 0-2. I, I, I actually would be surprised. I think that this is a team that can pick up a victory against possibly Misfits. I think that that's where I'm looking for them to you know, put it together, get Jazuki uh, going in the mid lane, get some real good kill pressure. I think that that's where they're going to pick up a possible win this weekend. But when you're looking at that uh, Fnatic matchup, that one is going to really be the toughest test for them moving into week two. And now, to be fair, maybe they don't go 0-2. I do believe they could win. I almost think Fnatic, they have a better chance than Misfits. I think Misfits look better than Fnatic in week, week one. Reckless looked a bit out of sorts on that Fnatic squad. So yes, there's some hype on Vitality, but I think it's gonna be brought back a bit here in uh, week two because they got tough matchups. Mm -hmm. I think I think pretty much any team in the league, if they're playing Misfits and Fnatic, they'd be hard pressed to go 2-0. Yeah, but I mean, they also have a very established uh, veteran coach in Yamato Cannon there. And I'm, I'm hoping that his experience and how he was able to help Splice rise up the ranks and make it to Worlds as fast as they did in that season, I think that uh, this will be something that he can possibly use that experience to help his players here stay calm and stay motivated uh, on this winning path. Yeah, and something we mentioned about week one is just the inherent synergy that they have with four-fifths of Giant on that roster. When everyone else is looking at a totally different squad, they still have uh, so many guys. Yeah, even even in EU even and NA as well, when you're watching it, it was quite noticeable some of these teams really haven't had time to work together. And that yeah. ranges from, you know, teams going on Korean boot camps like Team Liquid in North America, and then you have TSM who had almost less than a week working all together, right? So when you're looking at, at these type of things, I think that, that when you're talking about vitality and how much time that they've all spent together, it really is a benefit for them. But that's something that could be slipping as you're moving into these later weeks as everyone else in Europe starts to get a little bit more familiar with each other's play styles. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, another team, Fnatic, least changes in the league coming into this split. And, uh, you know, I, as well as many other people, kind of had them as the favorites, the preseason favorites coming into the split. But um, they didn't look that great in week one. No, a pretty rough week from Fnatic. Not exactly what you wanted to see. Uh, Soaz had a pretty strong week. Other than that, 
not really a lot to write home about if you're a Fanatics fan. I think that you should be really expecting a bit of a step up here now that you're into the second week of action. Yeah, and I will say that Caps was actually pretty fantastic in week one. He had pretty much the best numbers across the board among all mid laners despite not going 2-0, but just kind of their macro play around the map did not seem to be very solid. Maybe that has to do with implementing Hillisang into the shot calling role or where he fits in that role. But Reckless in general just looked way off in both of their games, not to the level that we saw in the second week of Worlds and for much of 2017 summer. Maybe that's having a new bot lane partner down there, but I mean, even on champions that he's comfortable with that we've seen him dominate on, like Zaya and Sivir, he just, he didn't look, he didn't look quite there. So I, again, I expect him to get back on track in week two, and I still think Fnatic's gonna be a top two, top three seed. Yeah, and nothing to take away from mini true packs, but this could be a very good matchup for Reckless to kind of get things going for him, right? You know, prey upon yeah. the rookie, the new guy, get some really good kills in there, pad up your stats. This could be the one where we see Reckless get a little bit of a fiery bounce back in this spring split. And then the second game of that week is against the fellow Swede, AD Carey, who Perk said is going to be far and away the best Swedish AD Carey in EU, which was very clearly a directed shot at Reckless. Uh, talking about that G2 squad, they have that first debut game against Misfits, and they looked pretty good in that game. It was back and forth for a bit, but eventually they just completely took over. Perks was an absolute animal in that game. Flame horizoning Sankux at like 26 minutes. That CS was absolutely bonkers. I told every single one of my friends that plays Rise to watch that game and just say, look, this is how you're gonna see us. This is how you're gonna farm. I want you to be this Steel strong. Raptors. <laughs> yeah, I want you to be this strong in all of my games. It was incredible stuff. Uh, they didn't obviously have the best of weeks that you would have expected from G2, but I think it was a definitely a solid foundation for this roster that's been put together to move forward uh, and to work together with um, what they've seen and what they've shown on the Rift and how they can improve upon that. Yeah, and obviously, the loss to Rockat, which again, they seem to do at least once a split. They it's, drop. it's their kryptonite, it happens. It's their kryptonite, it's what happens. Rockat are the king slayers, as the commentators love to say so <laughs> often, pretty much whenever they play them. But I mean, despite even going one and one, I think G2 is still a pretty terrifying team to go against. Even with four new guys, that Misfits game was proof that uh, they're still kind of the team you have to go through in EU, even though it is early on. And uh, yeah, this week, They've got Fnatic, that's gonna be a very interesting match. We'll see what kind of strength these guys are going into. As I mentioned, that is the last game of the week, so we'll see how they perform in their opening games. But right now, I think G2 is looking better than Fnatic. Yeah, I think that that's the way that you have to lean towards in this one. But nonetheless, G2 versus Fnatic to round out the week. What an exciting week two in European LCS. Yeah, plenty of good games as well. Uh, Shulka, we'll just see. I want to know if Upset's playing. That's the main thing I want to I would know. like to see him playing as well. Yes. Uh, kind of a nice little thing about Schalke, though, is uh, you know I'm sure most are aware, some might not be, that there's also a football or soccer uh, club, Schalke. And at their uh, stadium that seats about over 70,000 people, uh, in the middle of one of their games this weekend, they took time to announce the results of their League of Legends team. Pretty cool stuff to see uh, a real you know European League, Bund Bundesliga soccer team talking about League of Legends in the middle of their game. Pretty cool stuff. I'm sure 99% of the fans were very confused as but to hey, what this update was. That 1% was sitting there and going, hey, Woo! that's what they were doing. This Boris guy, I know who yeah. he is. Wow, he looks pretty solid. Eh, but yeah, Schalke got a pretty diehard fan base already, despite not even being in the LCS for very long. I know they were there before, but mm -hmm. they got a good fan base going forward. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more esports content.